Okay, so it's Abby Jones, and I'm 34, and I work um, as a what we call a branch operations assistant, which is like a personnel-based um, role for John Lewis in Chichester. And Dan Jones, 39. <laughs> <laughs> so reluctantly. I know, that's, I'm nearly 40. Um, and I'm, I don't know what I'm, author, YouTuber, and e-course maker. I make uh, courses teaching therapy stuff do YouTube to try and educate about autism and hypnosis and things like that and write books about it as well. Yes. The label Asperger's obviously doesn't exist anymore yeah. uh, and hasn't done for a while so um, although that's the term that most people kind of think of mm. uh, because the label doesn't exist I just say autistic it tackles things more head-on yeah. Uh, you know, they don't have to say, oh, are you? And mm. um, it starts conversation and demystifies it a bit more than kind of giving it any other label, I find. Mm -hmm. my, my, me and my friends, you know, we used to hugging each other goodbye. And so you just reciprocated. And obviously at the time I didn't know any different because you were just a normal guy to me, you know, no different. And... He then hugged me, and I did. I did remember, yeah, thinking at the time, oh, that's weird. He's hugged me a little bit longer than he hugged everyone else. But <laughs> you know, I still didn't really think much of it at the time. Um, but clearly, the signs were there. For me, because it's he Dan's only person I've ever been out with, yeah. um, so I have nothing to compare to to sort of say, oh, that's a little bit different to what somebody else might do. Um, and so I just think. Well, the whole time I've known Dan, I just think that's just how Dan is. Like, everyone has their own sort of, like, ways of being. I just think well, that's just mm -hmm. the way that Dan is. Like, I have my own sort of ways I do things. I don't... Um, but, I mean, obviously, you, when you hear the term and then you sort of look it up and you sort of hear about some of the common traits of someone who has Asperger's or um, high function autism, you start to... I do start to sort of notice some of them more in Dan. I'm like, oh, OK, so that's why he reacts like that or that's why... Or that's... I'm trying... Like, I'm, understand how he will feel in the social situation mm. so I can understand if Dan gets uncomfortable I can understand that is why he's uncomfortable so it does help give a bit more but I think that because you're quite shy yeah. and you're a very quiet person whereas yeah. your friends back when we met are party type people yeah. you know, they're very sort of into partying and going out and, and you weren't no, you're very I was... into wanting to keep yourself to yourself and not like crowded places yeah. and mm. I didn't like crowded places so yeah. I would be on yeah. um, the beach yeah. on my own, just sat on the beach. And so obviously having someone who's happy to also sit quietly on the beach rather than screaming and doing <laughs> karaoke yeah, and yeah. wanting to drink, and, but instead thinking, let's go away from all this hustle and bustle and go yeah. and be quiet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that trait in me, yeah, I liked... that what's worked for us yeah. and what you related to is I wasn't like all the people in our lives. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think, how much do you hug? When do you hug? You know, the last thing you want is to hug someone and have them go, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. And you realise that you've misread the signs or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously things like that happen with everyone. There's a risk yeah. of it. Um, but I'm very aware of that. Uh, even before being diagnosed, I was very aware that it was very easy to misread signs, mm -hmm. and, uh, misread social situations and accidentally offend people and say yeah, things. Yeah, just, you just say things as it is. You don't beat around the bush. And no. if people don't know you, they... Yeah, they go, oh, that's a bit rude, that's a bit, why did he say that? But when I get to know you, they just, it just say, that's just Dan, that's just, you know. Yeah, obviously no offence is ever meant. No. So mm -hmm. if I say something that offends someone, I want them to tell me bluntly back. Yeah. Not go and gossip to friends or something yeah. about how rude I am, because but I didn't when I, know yeah. that I did it. But when I want an honest opinion on something, I know to mm -hmm. go to Dan, because I know he'll tell me the truth straight up, you know. He won't just <laughs> have to my feelings. And sometimes, you know, that can, if I say to him, do you like this outfit? And he goes... No, that's like my nan would wear. I'm like, right, okay, right, thanks for the stick, I'll go back and change. But um, it does stop you buying things sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Mm -hmm. I might go get code away and you'll suddenly bring it back down to earth, so. And I just, I wouldn't get subtlety. If someone's flirting with me, mm. it just goes over my head mm. and I completely am oblivious yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, even now, if someone was yeah. flirting with yeah. me, you... uh, Abby might get jealous about noticing something yeah. and thinking, why are you not stopping this? Or why yeah. not? And I wouldn't notice at all. I'd have no. to have someone point it out to me. Yeah. That mm. cause it just goes way over my head. Um, and I much prefer just being direct. I don't like mm. uncertainty. Yeah. 
So I'd rather have, uh, and this goes for like work I've done and all sorts of things, that I'd rather, if something might blow up in my face, I'd rather have it blow up in my face than come and get me out when it's out of my control. Mm -hmm. So if there's something I have to say or do that may upset someone, I'd rather upset them to their face, potentially, and deal with the fallout there and then. Mm -hmm. You know, you have it where at random point they might come and get you and say, oh, you really made me angry about and now you have to deal with it when you're not in the right headspace and you're not prepared. And mm. I'd just rather do things nice and bluntly mm. and uh, ideally on my terms mm. uh, so there's no uncertainty. Mm. Been together for... 17 years. That's 17. a good way my age. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't look my age. <laughs> um, but we've been together since I was 17, so 17 mm. years, so didn't come back the maths now. Um, and, yeah, we've been together married for four years four years this june mm -hmm. um and yeah we've we've just been had a solid relationship right from the start haven't we we've, oh, so well so. in the early days we annoyed each other so yeah. i'd be very blunt <laughs> yeah that's and true I, you yeah. would want attention yeah i'd be not i think i was attention. a lot more insecure back then and so i wanted a lot more attention and you sometimes found that overwhelming yeah and so mm. you would then, then i'd bluntly just say no leave yeah then that, that, that would upset me and you would take that as a horrible, yeah. you know, I'm being mean to you, yeah. when I would just throw you out the flat or yeah. whatever, because I was like, nope, had enough, go, Yeah. I'm doing something yeah. else now. But now with experience and time, I can I've, understand why you act like that. And, and get, I've had yeah. to grow a lot. Um, I've often said that I think love is the thing that can transform people, because mm. from my point of view, I've gained emotions, yeah. or, or a, I've always had emotions, More awareness. but I've gained an awareness of yeah. them and an attachment to them. Uh, which I never used to have because you have to put someone else first all the time mm. and year after year, you know, day after day, yeah. you have to be thinking of someone else and thinking, how can I make sure this person doesn't yeah. decide to leave me today? No, you're very good at putting me first. Like, he, he's so attentive and thoughtful. Like, if my a book comes out that I like, he'll have bought it for me. Um, if he sees something I like, he'll, he'll pick it up for me. You know, you really like... Like even when we're at home, it's like mm. I'm like, oh, I really want a drink, and he'll go and make me a drink. You know, not much prompting, not much hinting. He'll just go and make. You know, very, I say, very attentive, very generous with. But I'm not good at spontaneity. No. So that doesn't cut. You know, I can do things that are nice and structured and rigid and planned. Yeah. Um, I'm, but I'm not good yeah. at the whole sort of. Yeah. So oh, we, let's spontaneously yeah, do so this today. Yeah. So like, well, where's the plan? Where's the structure? Yeah. This is too uncertain, can't cope with this. Yeah. And in arguments, I take things very literally. So yeah. we don't argue, like we've never ever screamed at each no. other or shouted at each other no. or anything like that. Just like petty little things. If, <laughs> yeah. um, if you say, I'll just go away, yeah. meaning get out of my hair, just which go I can out. understand right here while I'm saying it now. Yeah. In that moment, I'll say, okay, and I'll, that'll be it. I'll assume that's the end of the relationship and I will leave with no intention of ever Yeah, and back. I have to try and talk him yeah. down and say, look, I don't mean you to leave, leave fully. Mm. I just mean go to the other room, give me, give us some space so we can calm down and then we can, you know, carry on. Mm -hmm. But you'll literally be like, right, well, this is it. I'm going to walk out the door and not come back. And I'm like, no, I don't mean that. I mean, just, <laughs> no, just, you know, yeah. Even out. though here and now, I know yeah. that. Yeah, in the moment. In the moment, as yeah. soon as I hear those words, mm -hmm. leave. Like, yeah. oh, okay, then. Yeah. And I just leave. Yeah, I think we're a bit, we're a bit yin and yang in some respects. Like, in certain situations, like, uh, more mundane situations, I can handle them a lot easier, like going to a shop, mm. um, going to ask somebody a question, making a telephone call. I can make without even thinking about it. It's just, you just do it. Whereas Dan yeah. can't cope with that. You can't do those simple tasks. That's Whereas stupidly stressful. Yeah. I get so angry. And mm. if I then eventually do go and do it, it doesn't go exactly as it's supposed to in my head. Then I get even more angry. And then eventually I just said, no, nope, sod it. Never yeah. doing it again. Yeah. Give up at that. And then that's it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like when we go out for yeah. days out, I will pay for the train fare yeah. so that you'll go and do the ordering the food. Yeah. Oh, so that way it helps me to yeah. avoid those sort of situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, we find coping strategies that help each other out. And I find some situations stressful and mm -hmm. that where Dan can find them, can deal with them a lot more matter of factly and calmly. The big things I'm, that you can have a structure for, yeah. I'm quite good at knowing because I've already got a plan for it. Yeah. Sm things that most people see smaller where there's huge numbers of variables like social interactions I can't handle no. and my biggest worry is normally for example if it's a work do of yours yeah. is being rude to one of your colleagues completely accidentally yeah. a lot of people are saying you're married <laughs> how does your wife go <laughs> so I thought well I can't talk for her so she wrote a chapter for my book 
Um, oh, fantastic. That sounds uh, really cool. So that people can see her perspective through her eyes, not yep. my eyes. So yep. like building little forts for me, uh, little dens for me to cut out all the sensory stuff. Yeah. Um, mm. So like um, putting blankets over the sofa so I can crawl into it and mm. hide in it yeah. or uh, blankets over the table so that I can crawl under the table. Mm. Uh, so blankets and cushions down under there. Little, little uh, den. Yeah, <laughs> den. Yeah. So just things that can help me when I'm struggling with mm. like, you know, if we've had to come home from London or something, right. or if we've had to yeah. uh, travel and it's been really busy or you know, if I'm just a bit stressed or something, and um, the slightest thing can then wind me up yeah. because I'm struggling to hold it together and focus on one thing as it is. Um, mm. So yeah. yeah. really like I'm not offended by it but I don't like the word artistic because it reminds me of spastic yeah what kids used to use when I was a kid mm. but like I if I'm in conferences and stuff I, I always use adult with autism but some people think although I do believe my autism is part of me I don't feel like I need the title artistic because I just think it sounds like an impairment which isn't an impairment but I don't need it pointing out that's how I feel about it but mm. it, massive percentage of our client group it doesn't bother them whatsoever. Um, we were neighbours for eight years and um, Chris had agoraphobia. Mm -hmm. He lost his job and had a bit of a breakdown and I'd had a breakdown, sounds like heartbreak hotel, uh, <laughs> and um, my son, I'd been depressed for about four years, I'd had a major breakdown in about 2006 or something, and my son bought me a husky dog mm. to give me a reason to get up and get dressed, and about a year in having her, I fell and damaged my knee, mm. and then Chris suggested taking her out, which had not been going out. So she kind of, and then we, we just sort of, because we've been friends for such a long time, it just sort of developed from there really. Mm -hmm. It's probably a lot harder for Chris because obviously being on the spectrum, I don't do facial expressions, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't know if somebody was asking me out or flirting or I just would not have a clue, you know, they could hit me with a brick in the face. I, wouldn't I don't take hints. <laughs> And, you know, I just don't take hints at all and I know that it, it took a lot for him and he had to be really brave because I'm quite a strong character as well, mm. you know, so he had to take that risk. Yeah. So, but I would have never, I would have never assumed, although I realised that I had feelings for Chris, I would have never pursued him had he not, I would have left it at that. Yeah. I wouldn't have dared in case I, because I get so much wrong about people, I would have assumed that I'd, you know, read it wrong. Yeah, we're good. It went nerve-wracking. <laughs> well, yeah, because we've obviously yeah, been friends it, before, so... I think, yeah, because we've been friends for such a long time and we knew a lot about each other. It was easy for me with Kristen because I want in that... I want stepping into a wide open space with somebody. Mm. It were a person I knew, so... We've been together about... I think we've been together about six years. Uh, we're not married, we live together. Um, we do intend to get married. I'm actually, <laughs> I need to get divorced from my ex-husband. We haven't been together for 20 years. Yeah. Um, so, but we, that's just dissolved. And Chris has never been married, so he wants to get married. Mm -hmm. I'm not really bothered about it, but that quite offends Chris. Like, you know, I just, mm -hmm. Like sometimes you, you care about different things when you're on the spectrum, don't you? People put onus on things that, like to me, it really don't matter. But I would do it for Chris, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't do it unless it meant something. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It really wouldn't bother me if I didn't get married. God, I will so allow bad. you to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah. The, these different aspects, what like um, prompting you to do stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. After prompt. See, you yeah, to prompt me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris has like puts my um, antidepressant out for me mm. and a big piece of it for And if you don't, I don't take it. Mm. I forget. I, I think Chris compromises a lot. Like, for instance, I have trouble starting things for myself and I'm disorganised. 
but Chris is quite organised in the house and things like that. Mm -hmm. But say I said, all right, I'm going to do it bedroom, and Chris got up and started doing bedroom, that would be it, I wouldn't be able to touch it. Mm -hmm. So then it, it's like, if you didn't understand the condition, it's like, I've left him to do that. Yeah. You know, it's it's stuff like that where it's like the, the last area where you think it would impact you. It's every day stuff, isn't it? Like yeah, sometimes yeah, I have yeah. to come in from work and just go to bed. Yeah. And Chris knows that any input whatsoever is just I just need you know download time. But then it can be other way and like she can come in and it's like rrr, 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 honestly and <laughs> talking non-stop. And you'll say something different. It's like we shut up. My anxiety's up here. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's little things like of the week we were driving to Leeds. And Chris knows that, you know, some things I take literally. And this sign and it said open hand car wash. And I went, oh, how do I do that? He went, not open hand. The hand car wash is open. <laughs> <laughs> but I think because I've learned to laugh at myself, it gets really funny, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But Chris is now like However many years down the road is able to like predict what I'm gonna how I'm yeah. gonna respond, which is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think one we've been very fortunate because we have a lot of similar interests. Um, for instance, gardening is one of the things. Um, so we've had some common ground there. So I would say meeting Chris has been easier than meeting somebody that didn't have that interest because it's got kind of an icebreaker. Mm. I would say that it's probably quite difficult for Chris because like for instance like last night um, I wanted to beat him with a big stick because he snored all night and I didn't sleep a wink you know but I'm sensitive to noise so sometimes it's not even not doing anything wrong if you, if you like but it, it can like really irritate me and I do I make him I try not to make him feel guilty because I'm older and wiser now. I probably would have um, gone on to more of an attack phase when I were younger and you've done this and you've done that. But I'm older and wiser now. I know that he doesn't snore on purpose, but it really, really winds me up. <laughs> it's like somebody tapping in your ear, you know. And I don't think that's a spectrum thing. I think that's yeah. fair to say. That's annoying for any woman. <laughs> Like, I could like remove myself, we've got three bedrooms, I could come down here, but I can still hear him. <laughs> you know, and it still winds me up. Yeah. But if I fall asleep first, it doesn't bother me. Mm. But because I never do, because I'm a poor sleeper, mm. you know, I'm lucky to have like four continuous hours, it's always an issue, always an issue. And mm. obviously because I don't sleep, I would say that's difficult for him because I get my most enlightened time in the evenings as well. It's when I come to life and want to do a project or go on my computer or, you know, which obviously I don't think somebody that went on the spectrum would probably just say, oh, just go to bed. You know, I can't. I've had an idea. <laughs> the most randomest thing ever. I'm a gardener. Yeah. <laughs> Self-employed. I'm running my business, so I've got a lot of work for me. Works for me some more. Um, We've got a volunteer, I've got a volunteer who started on he's on Spectrum as well. So Yeah. It was his first time last week and enjoyed it. Yeah. I love Not that different. as well. I love that side of Chris where he's taking everything on board and that it can it's like you know when you're on Spectrum and you work with people on Spectrum, it's like they're your children. But to be able to live with somebody who I know I can trust to be the right kind of person with somebody and I know that it'll be a good boss to him and that he'll, you know, use the right language and deliver it in the right way and things and not overload him and it's a big thing, isn't it, you know, with plenty of practice. <laughs> I, I started as a volunteer and we're an uh, adult service for people on Spectrum, so we work for and with people who formerly had, had like uh, a diagnosis of Asperger's, but it's called autism now under the old umbrella. Um, so I started as a volunteer there after my breakdown because I realised that um, something wasn't right and I've been reading up on it and kind of linked with it. And my GP was very understanding and went away, read up on it and got some funding and got me some funding for a diagnosis. So working where I work was, to me, was just like going home. Well, like the family I'd never had 
I do have a family, but you know what I mean? I'm leaving literal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it was just like, um, well, just massive epiphanies every day. That I think just to realise that you're not a crank or whatever and, you know, you have those responses for a particular reason. So, and to, to adapt, I've learnt lots of coping mechanisms, coping strategies that, you know, I've grown as a person. <laughs>